Hey everybody, and welcome to a stumpy wild ride with Steve-O. This episode with Adam Ray as Dr. Phil was recorded a little bit over a month ago. And candidly, at the time, I was in a very dark and bad place. And that's why it's stumpy. I just found myself stumped for ways to keep up with Adam Ray, who was on fire from start to finish. I mean, he took the ball and ran with it in spectacular fashion. So thanks to Adam Ray for making this episode so fantastic. And I'm happy to report that everything with me is a lot better now. I'm out on my super dummy tour. Tonight we've got an unbelievably sold out show in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Very excited for it. The show has come so far in the last month. Man, I have been putting myself in terrible situations time and time again for you guys. So catch me on my Super Dummy Tour. Dates are at stevo.com. And without further ado, everybody, let's get into it. All right, here we go. It is 6.03. And, uh, Which means it's 5.03 somewhere. <laughs> I like to wake up and start the day with a quote or an anecdote. Are we going? Let's effing go. I don't want you to lose that gold I just opened with, but I am a big catchphrase guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, mantras. I don't meditate as much as I should. My wife, Robin, shout out. She's always a... Uh, Boy, you know you're getting older when it's tough to cross your legs after you shit. <laughs> yeah, I like it. How many times a day do you poop, Steve-O? Be honest. Ah, <sighs> oh, man, some days I don't poop at all. Some days I, sometimes I go for three days no pooping. Three days? I have gone for three days no pooping, and oh. then I have a big one. And then you have a big one, and do you have to, you know, notify the authorities? Do you, I got to notify. Meaning your wife and your pets to leave the premises? I have to notify the plumber sometimes because... Good uh, God, you it, give them a heads up. Yeah. Literally. Well, you I go, mean, there's two heads in this... Yeah. bowl for you you yeah. might want to call backup <laughs> bring an extra plunger or an extra guy sometimes when i poop at a friend's house i'll flush you know depending on how hospitable they've been okay i show up i got a friend named randy right <laughs> he's got more duis than a human should he's already he never has driven sober i'll put it that way but he always gets home so hey kids you know there's a lesson in there somewhere but you know, Facebook is a place where you can find just about anything. You go on the marketplace, you can buy a couch or a woman, okay? I have, Randy is not only one of my best friends, but he's also my my worst friend at making decisions on his own. Does that make sense? Yeah. Who's your best friend, Steve-O? And we can all go around the room and take a, an answer to this. My, my best friend, uh, I, you know, I gotta say this guy right here. I love it. You guys know each other how long? About 11 years, probably longer. We knew each other before that. Who do you think comes faster? Oh, that's me. Steve. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. We actually had a race one time. You did? Yeah. Hold well, that thought. We'll be right back. <laughs> no, we'll keep her right here. I you do want to we'll cut to a I, clip I, of that. I, I want to say a catchphrase. Please. And it's going to start with, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, people of the universe, I bring to you again, Dr. Phil. Coming back. Loved it so much the first time, but I wanted to do it on my home turf here at the Comedy Store. No podcast has ever been recorded in the green room bathroom at the Comedy Store main room. Yeah. And I don't know if that's true, but it feels true. It, it absolutely does. And you just went from uh, Mar-a-Lago right. to uh, the Comedy Store bathroom. Bathroom. And, yeah, embargo. Where, yeah, yeah. And, and you just dropped a logo. I just dropped a logo. We'll edit this out. But I think that there's something about... There's something about visiting uh, fancy places that gives you inspiration, right? Remember the first time you went to Disneyland or the Playboy Mansion and you go, wow, anything's possible if I put my mind into it or my dick inside of it, right? Yeah. You ever been in the mansion? I have. I got kicked out. Go on. I was, <laughs> I was partaking in some dry goods. Dry humping? No, dry goods. Can you put I, up your nose? Dry, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, gotcha. Booger sugar. I had some sniffle snacks. <laughs> There's so... You think there's more different words for Coke or, or penis? You know what I'm saying? What a fun game, by the way, Coke or penis. You know, if you are if you do drugs, you play that game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think there, there are an awful lot of names but, for Like, we for just penis. named three for Coke, but penis probably, you know, let's go through it. First of all, let's finish the Coke labels. De Devil's dandruff. 
Never heard that. Peruvian, Peruvian marching, powder. marching powder. Yeah. Peruvian. Uh, d- taking a, a snow globe or whatever, or snow, uh, the slopes. Take, yeah, yeah. Go yeah, skiing. You know go what? skiing. Like, yeah. My buddies and I, I used to say. Uh, Does this story get better? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know that that uh, I wanted to do a mogul. You know, like like a, like a yeah, bump. Oh, I'm not doing a bump. Doing a mogul. Doing a mogul. Yeah, because yeah. I would do big bumps. Yeah, you go hard. Yeah. I think if you're doing coke and you're doing a tiny bump, that's like if you're going to drink a Capri Sun, drink the whole box, pussy. <laughs> oh, oh, you're nine and you have diabetes? Oh, I'm sorry, Caleb. Well, then you shouldn't have showed up to this fucking bouncy house in the first place. Right. Did you do I, coke in the 70s? Uh, oh, uh, did Michael Jackson have a ranch with uh, llamas that was a distraction so he could finger children? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Sorry, that was a long way to get there, but yes is what I meant to say. Okay. I love, I love, because I, I have FOMO. Yeah. Like even as right now, I drove by Saddle Ranch. We're on Sunset Boulevard, shout out, where the comedy store lives, where a lot of fun lives. You want to talk about booger sugar and taking a, a ski down uh, Oopsie Daisy Island. <laughs> Sunset is full of, of dwarves and whores and oh my, you know, and not in that order. But Saddle Ranch, there's a bull, there's a fat chick on the bull when I drove by. We're we're not even coming up on six p.m. and there was a drunk uh, Michigan gal. I'm just assuming Midwest that was on the bull, and she was. I mean, look, if you're on the receiving end of what she's doing uh, in the sex department, you're having a good time because <laughs> that bull, even that bull, was like, oh, okay, uh, you know, I don't, I'm a me- I'm a mechanical bull, but I just came in my pants. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So my point is, I'm thinking about what's going on at the Saddle Ranch, even as I'm here having a blast with you guys, because I'm always thinking of what else is out there, right? Yeah. Aliens, you know, Joe Rogan's friends with all the aliens. Yeah. He's just keeping it secret. I'll say this right now. He might be one. Hmm. Who else can talk for five and a half hours about nothing? <laughs> aliens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, as a doctor, do you know, you ever seen an alien? Or uh, yeah, ever? I've seen a few. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, you know, I'll keep that to myself. I'm a big advocate of taking it to the grave. Really? Yeah, I don't got to go out shouting out, oh, oh, I saw an alien. Ooh, he did some stuff to me. I don't. Nobody needs to know that, you know? Yeah, there's a lot it of stuff consensual. you got to... Go ahead. There's a lot of stuff you can take to the grave just being a, like a psychologist. I think so. I think I've seen... On the Dr. Phil program, I've seen a lot of... You know, I once had a mom on the show. We're, we're big on moms coming through, you know, trying to fix their kids. And it's usually some twat 15-year-old bitch... That's just, you know, I, you know, I don't get, I don't get enough allowance, you know, my mom's a fucking, my mom sucks. And it's, her name's always like Stephanie or Brooke, you know, and I try to tell them, well, your mom's working hard, you know, it's not her fault that your dad fucked, you know, everyone in the cul-de-sac, you yeah. know, and then I take a commercial break and then, you know, by that time everyone's tuned out. But yeah, that's the secrets, right? The secret is to, to get to the core of what's going on. Listen enough, but then let them figure it out. You know, I think when you're trying to solve, that was a problem in my old relationships. I try to fix everything. You know, my, my girlfriend will be like, it, you know, I have a, a pass to 24 hour fitness, but it closes at 11 on Saturdays. I go, sounds like a you problem. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. it didn't work out clearly because, you know, I, she, you know, I needed to at least be somewhat sensitive. But that's not okay for 24 hour fitness. To Thank close you. At 11. I think it's bullshit. It's false advertising. Yeah. It's like if Chuck E. Cheese was like, hey, it's a real animal band in here. Yeah, right. Because or, <laughs> right. robots is what I mean by that. You've been, yeah. Chuck, you've been to Chuck E. Cheese, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I play skee ball. He got kicked out of there for doing the, uh, <laughs> the powder stuff. With a Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> oh, man. This is a great day. Okay. Now, I'm going to get serious here for a second. Please, I got plenty of time to get serious. Because when we went to your big new Dr. Phil studio. Maritime Media. Yeah, the the, the Maritime. Check it out. Shows Monday through Friday. They they said, ask pretty much anything. Yeah. But but, but you didn't want to talk about the, 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 the Catch Me Outside girl, the bad baby. Right. Why don't you want to talk about her? Well... You know, there's certain things that we've all done that we go, you know, look, there's, have you ever, have they ever found the kid on the back of the milk carton? My point, my point exactly. <laughs> Some things are just left un, unsaid, unheard of, you know, you don't have to figure out every Rubik's cube. Sometimes you're stuck on blue, orange, yellow, you know? Right. So what I, what I mean by that is 
she came in with a game plan. She knew what she was doing. Okay, I was just a part of the process. Sometimes you're in someone else's movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was just a supporting role. You ever do a, like when I first get, got into show business, I would uh, do extra work on like a, according to, if you can make more noise back there, that'd be great. <laughs> if, uh, just Christ, all you're doing is sitting still and you still manage to fucking crinkle up a bag of Pringles. <laughs> so anyway, nice knees, by the way. Said nobody ever. Uh, no, those are hot knees. You can put them on OnlyFans, make about six bucks from a gig. All right, so, uh, all right. So, Bad Baby, she came in with a game plan. I respected that. Respect is a nice thing, isn't it? And if you want to be respected, then don't get caught with an embarrassing, filthy, and unhealthy habit. Drop that habit and replace it with a good one by using Fume. It is a diffusive device which I have in my pocket 100% of the time. And if you ever catch me without it in my pocket, I will record shout out videos for you and all your dumb little buddies. But I pretty much always have it because I love it. And why? It makes air flavored. And there's nothing unhealthy about it whatsoever. It's just something about these bad habits that are driven by needing to do something with your hands. This gives you all of that fidgety things to do, and it's healthy, and I love it. And if you've got that bad habit that you know you need to drop, then go to tryfume.com. That's T-R-Y-F-U-M dot com, and use the promo code Stevo to get a special gift with your journey pack today and your journey pack is everything that you need to start that journey to a healthier happier and more respected you so one more time go to tryfume.com use the promo code stevo to get a killer gift with your journey pack today and let's get back to it I said, I'm, I'm here for this. I'm here for you taking what you've got and turn it into something uh, spicy, Rumpelstiltskin style. Remember Rumpelstiltskin? Oh, yeah. He took a bunch of uh, pubes and turned them into solid. Go I, didn't, I never saw the movie. But he. What, but my point is, is he, he took a bad situation and made it good. And she kind of did that. She said, people are shitting on me. I got a rough upbringing. I'm a product of my environment. My mom's drinking Zimas for breakfast and Frosted Flakes for dinner. I'm going to fucking figure it out, you know, take two steps forward, two steps back, like Paul Abdul said to do, but then I'm going to take five more forward, okay? So, uh, <laughs> I got to be honest, I'm hearing this for the first time, too, but, <laughs> but as we, <laughs> I don't like to pre-write any of my sayings or my approaches right. to the way to, to live, but I think she's fine. She's made billions of dollars off OnlyFans. She's got a mansion. I think she's not even 30. You know, she just released the tape yesterday of her boyfriend hitting her. Did you see that? Yeah, well, that sucks. I'm not a fan of domestic abuse. I'm not a fan. The only type of violence I support is uh, if you're ever playing like duck hunt with your friend. Yeah. And he cheats. I think you have grounds to put his head in the oven. Of course. But, you know, that's just that's a side of me. I don't like to show too often. Video game violence is real. Not the violence that kids, quote unquote, display from playing the games. But, you know, you ever played Madden and your friend fucking knocks the controller out of your hand? And then you're like, well, this is why you're adopted. And you say some fucked up shit, you know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, my point is, we all, have a, we all have a path. And whether you stay on it, that's your choice. Are you surprised with Bad Baby getting hit by her boyfriend? I mean, did you see it? Well, I think no, one's, no one expects to get hit. Yeah. Is that what you're asking? Nobody wakes up. What a dumb fucking question you just asked me. No, yeah, I'm just that. saying. Am I surprised she got hit? Yeah, I mean, just uh, are there course. certain behaviors. Yeah, no, she that, had it coming. What do you want me to say right now? I'm no. just saying, are there certain behaviors that she displayed on your show where you kind of saw her path forward? Well, I saw that yeah, she was. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to. I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah, my bad. Hey. <laughs> I drank a five hour energy about six days ago, and it's just now kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. So I think that, look, she didn't deserve it. Nobody deserves to get pounded and grounded like that. Um, but, look, you have to be accountable. So, you know, she, I don't know what she did. But, look, the pictures were, they were nasty. I would have rather watched Two Girls, One Cup than seeing that photographic evidence. Two Girls, One Cup, that's something that, 
When's the last time you walk? How about this? Who's the first person that showed it to you? You know what's fucked up? I'll never forget where I was on 9-11 and who showed me two girls, one cup. Who showed I, it to you? One of my buddies, coincidentally, who got out of the towers in 9-11. He was like, I got a new lease on life. By the way, I just got sent a wild video. <laughs> and I was like, dear God, this is how you're YOLOing it up right now? I thought you'd go to Denny's or cheat on your wife or something. You just got, you got a second chance. But he just went right on his phone, pulled up. It, YouTube. It, it was just such a fascinating video. It, it took too long to make. I thought we would have done that in the '90s, but it didn't, here we are. <laughs> it just didn't look like poop, man. It no, looked it was like, fake poop. It, it looked like a milkshake. It looked like fake poop. Yeah. Anyway, but no, I think she'll be fine. I hope that guy gets in trouble. Yeah, uh, there's a couple of things I don't subscribe to: paying for parking, water, and watching people get the shit kicked out of them, <laughs> unless it's bum fights. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't really You're, like that either, man. I remember. Bump fights? Well, no, not the ones on YouTube live. Oh. Drive down Hollywood Boulevard or La Brea, maybe a Tuesday around 9 p.m., and just scream something out the window. They'll get it going. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like their mating call. Just scream it, you know, hey, you know, you know, you know, you know, get it, figure it out, you know, so, you know and they take it personally because they haven't figured it out. And then they just climb out of the bushes or the trees. <clears throat> How, how's your marriage? Uh, it's fine. I mean, with with all this 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 uh, this rebirth in your career, all of this this comedy touring. I mean, it's like wild. Yeah, it's a, it's a newfound. Robin was never used to the travel part of the job. She's used to me being at home. We have turkey pot pie, five p.m. You know, maybe some uh, some sort of sex stuff around eight. So there's a two to three hour window there where she's fucking off somewhere. I may be in the treehouse doing God knows what, you know, and then uh, and then we'll meet up uh, for bed. And it was a, a routine that we both got accustomed to. But now I'm traveling around doing the show here at the store, the comedy store. Shout out. About to take it on the road. We're about to announce a Dr. Phil Live theater tour coming up in the wow. fall. Uh, we actually, uh, I don't know when this comes out, but we are uh, going to be a part of the New York Comedy Festival. Uh, when is this going to drop, by the way? This will drop um, one week from two days from now. Okay, okay, great. There was an easier way to say that. Okay, but, uh, <laughs> but, but uh, well, guess what? Uh, so July 16th has passed. So tickets for Dr. Phil Live at the Beacon Theater in New York as a part of the New York Comedy Festival are on sale now, as well as tickets for the shows in D.C. and Philadelphia, uh, all uh, online or at adamrancomedy.com. So, and then more uh, shows will be added. We just did a few in Portland and Seattle. I saw that. Went wild. This comedy store is one thing where you go, people are here, they gotten used to it, they know it's only here. So they come from all walks of life. You know, I had a couple of fly from Phoenix uh, last time we were here. Uh, tonight, there's people from Canada who have made the trip because um, we're getting ready to do a show here tonight. And uh, with uh, with Nick Schwartz and Camille Nanjiani and uh, my man here to the uh, to the right. And uh, it's going to be a blast. But the theater show is exciting because you take it outside of where it was birthed and you go, oh, I hope, I hope people are uh, just as excited in a different place. And I'll, you know, truth be told, maybe even crazier. You know, they're going to be way more excited. We were in Portland and we had Harlan Williams come out, flew him up there. Uh, your boy Danger Aaron, who lives up there, came out. Did he? Yeah. Uh, did some bits with us. Tased Jeremiah in the pubes. Um, that was fun. And then uh, did Seattle had Joel McHale, Sean Kemp, uh, and uh, and a rapper named Durte. And so now it's uh, on the road, and the challenge is finding out people that want to come fuck with it elsewhere. But, you know, on the East Coast, there's plenty of people out there. You know, Judge Judy lives out there. Uh, Judge Judy Willow and Dr. Smith. Phil. Yeah, I'm trying to get that going for real, and we're pretty close. Man, that's impressive. It'd be wild, yeah. Um, who is that murderer girl? That, that... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a big murder guy. I know it's a girl. It's a it's a it's a girl thing to be in a murder, but man, there's no shortage of killing spree documentaries that I just you know. And while Robin stays up late watching them, and she'll you know it'll be like you know the announcers you know they're always real serious. Like it was a Tuesday at five p.m. and David didn't compliment you know Lisa's bolognese. So, so she cut his cock up, you know, you know, whatever. But it's a dark story. And Robin looks over at me and be like, see, 
This is what this could be you. And it's terrifying. Murders, we can't get enough. Why do we love murder in this country so much? I mm -hmm. couldn't tell you, but I'm fascinated by it. And that, that, Who's the, the girl? What are you talking the, about? The murder girl that you interviewed so, so well. Oh, thank you. So well. Um, Gypsy. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Blanchard. What a wild individual. I mean, her mom made her think she had HPV for about 25 years and cancer. I guess I should have led with that. That was a bigger disease that she was uh, you know, falsely living with. Uh, diabetes, AIDS, uh, you know, uh, everything. Name it. You go down the Cheesecake Factory menu of no thank yous. She had them all, you know, herpes, UTI. Her mom was like, you got it all. To the point to where Gypsy was like, do I, you know, do I have, uh, you know, IBS? And she's like, yep. Yeah, she had that, that Oompa Loompa Munchkin oh, yeah. syndrome. What's that? Uh, oh, Munchausen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your way is more fun, though. Yeah. The Oompa Loompa Munchausen syndrome. Yeah. yeah, she was a munchkin. She was a munchkin. She was tiny, and her mom was, uh, her mom was you know, her, let's just say her mom liked to dip burritos into Cool Whip. And she was a big gal, and she uh, had no reason to really exist other than to shit on her daughter. Yeah. She raised her to think she was fucked up when her mom is the one who was fucked up, more so. So here goes Gypsy Rose, 12, 13 years old. You know, she meets a guy, I think about 15, 16. She's online, chatting it up. This guy's like, hey, you're pretty hot. She's like, yeah, but I have uh, herpes and AIDS. And the guy's like, all right, I just, you know, I just want to ask you what your favorite food was. You really took this conversation up a notch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not really an aphrodisiac, if I'm being honest. He, he, I think he said. So then one thing leads to another. They meet up live in the flesh, which is the best way to get to know somebody. You can do it online or through Skype, but you just can't. It's important to smell somebody, you know. Like every time I see Joe Biden sniff somebody's head, I go, he's just trying to get to know who they are. <laughs> I mean, it's a weird way to go about it, uh, you know, be honest, but it's it's a quick way to do it, you know, instead of all the bullshit, where you're from, what's your favorite instrument. So so here's Gypsy Rose, and then she goes, wait, I think I can walk. I think I'm not allergic to bread, you know? And then she killed her mom, or got the guy to kill her mom so that they could fuck. Great story. And so we chatted for about three hours about it. She showed me the tape of her killing, of the guy killing the, uh, her mom, and uh, it's wild. They he stabbed her, put her in a bag, uh, a couple of bags. Again, she's a big gal, but uh, <laughs> a, one to two sleeping bags from REI. Uh, maybe it was a tent. Either way, they blocked her up, zipped her up, put her in the trash can. Trash guy didn't even know it was a body. That's always the fascinating part to me when a trash guy picks up the trash and can't smell that it's a rotting carcass. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm so... So interested to know, like you're watching all these murder documentaries, sure. and they always talk about how there's this distinct smell of a decomposing human body. But like, is it actually any different from the smell of a decomposing seal, possum, right, or a raccoon? I like, you're saying. I mean, like, is it is it is it really a different I smell? I don't think so. I think uh, whether it's a dead raccoon or a a, a, a you know, uh, uh, some sort of, you know, some sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Jew. So if somebody's that's just, <laughs> if it's a rabbi with a cold sore or it's a fucking hippopotamus that's got like a razor burn, you know, uh, yeah, it also, people and creatures smell the same is my point. There's a better way to get to that. But, but uh, what's your favorite animal? Is there an animal that you guys really connect to? This was a question that I ask uh, most children that I, I speak at a lot of middle schools, and I just want to, you know, get to know uh, what they're into. And so, what, <laughs> if you ask them what kind of animal they like, it tells you a lot. Some of them are like, "I like cougars," you know, and then they'll do this, you know, <laughs> <laughs> which I laugh. I laugh. I, yeah. I'm just I'm trying not to, you know, because that's funny, but it's also inappropriate. So you got to yeah. find a balance. But they're 15. They're they're just jerking off all the time. So. But uh, but what's your favorite animal, I guess, is my question. My favorite animal, uh, the, the capybara. I just found out the capybara gets along with every animal. See, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Look at that. Harmony. You get along with everybody. Yeah. I'm I've never heard a bad thing said about you. I've never heard a bad thing from you. And every time I'm around you, I feel better about myself. 
Well, we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll keep it right here. Bless you, bless you. No, I, I mean that. That's a real thing coming from a real guy to a to a real face. So I hope you heard it. I hope you received it. Uh, but the kookaburra, what is it? The kooka? The capybara. Capybara. There it is, right there. It looks like a goat meets a meets a warthog meets a kitten meets a stuffed animal, huh? Yeah. It looks like a Pixar uh, creature. How come there's no capybara uh, movie? What would be their story if you had to write it? Send it to Disney. I, I, I don't know. That's right. I Send just... me an email. What's your favorite animal? I like seagulls. Yeah. You knew it. I knew it, yeah. You seem like a seagull guy. You look like a, a, a seagull if it turned into a person. I think we can all agree that the odds of Scott Randolph turning into a seagull are pretty slim. But man, are the odds looking good at UFC 305 this weekend in Perth, Australia. You know I love my UFC pay-per-views, and this card is going to be a banger. I'm about to give you my picks for every out on the main card and I'm doing so for our good friends at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official betting partner of the UFC and they've got a killer deal for you. New customers, if you download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the promo code STEVO, you can automatically, you will automatically get $150 in bonus bets if you simply bet five bucks on the fights. I mean, what a generous offer, man, and what a banger of a card. It starts off with Li Jin Liang against Carlos Prates. And let's just say, I really like Li as an underdog on this one. I'm going with Li Jin Liang. Then the next fight, we've got Tai Tuivasa against uh, Rosenstrike. I got Rosenstrike on this one. Heavyweight's going to bang it out. Then Dan Hooker against Matush Gamrot. I got Gamrot on this one, okay? Then we've got Urseg, Steve Urseg, Australia's own against New Zealand's Kai Kara France. And I'm going Urseg all the way. Then what do we got here? Ah, the main event. It's Israel Adesanya against Drikas Duplessis. This is a grudge match for the ages. And you know what? <laughs> I've never done well to bet against Israel Adesanya, but I'm doing it. Let's go Drikas Duplessis for the middleweight championship of the world this weekend. And one more time, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use the promo code Stevo. New customers do that and automatically get 150 bucks in bonus bets for simply betting five bucks on the fights. You can't go wrong. So do that. Enjoy the fights this weekend. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. Or in West Virginia, visit 1 800 Gambler.net. In New York, call 877 8 Hope NY or text Hope NY 467 369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888 789 7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 and over, age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.co slash MMA for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. And let's get back to it. <laughs> really? For sure, yeah. Seagulls smile a lot. They're talkative. They got decent bone structure. Decent. Yeah. Your beard is very seagull-esque. Yeah. It's regal, too. I think the regal seagull. That's we, the regal beagle on Three's Company. Great show. Yeah. John Ritter was fucking both of them, huh? Oh, for, oh, for sure. What a great show. They're like, this guy, what was the pitch on that? Or, Hear me out. John Ritter is fucking both his roommates. <laughs> and then some yeah. weird kooky neighbor is going to come over and always try to ask him what it looked like. Or, you know, yeah, didn't they find that out? Show, but, didn't they find that out like on a live interview? They're like, you were having sex with him too? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Hooper? Or what was the guy's Mr. name? Mr. Roper. Mr. Roper. Yeah. Mr. Hooper's the uh, store manager on Sesame Street. Mr. Hooper. Look that up. What's your name back there? That's Isaac. Isaac, what's up, player? He doesn't talk much. So, because by choice or nah, part he's, of his contract? He's a huge fan. <laughs> Isaac, what's your favorite animal? Uh, Don't lie to me. Sloth. There we go. Sloth. Seven deadly sin. Seven deadly sin. Yeah. The sloth is a, a, a mysterious creature, right? They fly. I don't Great. Thanks, Isaac. Fly. Jesus Christ. No, yeah. they, they hang out in trees. Oh, you're looking up guy. Mr. Hooper, huh? 
I got Mr. Hooper here. Yeah. Show the fellows real quick. There we go, Mr. Hooper. Ah, yeah. He looks like uh, Colonel Sandals meets B Bernie Sanders. Oh, wow. That could not be a, a better <laughs> description. Colonel Sanders meets Bernie Sanders yeah. in the Mr. Hooper story. Yeah. Can you tell me how to get to Popcornopolis? Uh, Steve-O, what, uh, go ahead. You looked like you had another question. I'm here to... Well, I was just like, uh, it just popped into my mind how wonderful that documentary about Mr. Rogers was. Unbelievable. I cried. I did too. Yeah, it's, the guy just wanted nothing but goodness for everybody. Yeah. And an impeccable wardrobe. Yeah. Talk about a guy that really put sweaters on the map. Yeah. What a thing to put things on the map. What do you think you put on the map? How about that? How about the... Can I be honest? Yeah. I, I don't know what that says about me. I usually feel like I'm a pretty good listener. I'm attentive. But I just now, and I'm not joking, realized that there's a cock above <laughs> Steve-O's right eyebrow. Yeah. When did you get that? And my second question is, why? <laughs> <laughs> I got it uh, the day after my 50th birthday. Happy birthday, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, man. You don't look, you don't, you look, I'll be honest, and people probably tell you you look younger than 50, right? Mm. I, I give you 42. Wow. That's shaving eight. <laughs> That's I'm shaving good. eight. Yep. Uh, you got it because why? You just, you go, here's to another 50. If I make it to 100, I'll get a pussy on the other side. Pussies are terribly difficult to tattoo. To tattoo. I was just going to say that. It doesn't, it's, it's, well, you got to get real. Read. Yeah, it doesn't read. It doesn't read. You got to, yeah, because everyone's like, what is that? Is that a, like a, a, a knuckle? You know, what right. is that? Right, 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 right. A knuckle. I sound like a guy who's never seen an actual vagina. <laughs> it looks nothing like a knuckle. Right. So, uh, did it hurt? It didn't hurt. It really didn't. It was, oh, and it's uh, got some driblets coming out yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got some. Okay, so the head is there. Okay, so for a second, I thought the head was closer to your uh, the middle of your forehead, but that's the shaft. Yeah. There we go. I got a dick tattooed on my face, man. It's it looks big, great. It's a big deal, yeah. Thanks. How, how did your uh, your significant other feel about it? She likes it. All for it, yeah. She's all for it. Well, she's all for you. <laughs> yeah. So she's all for, for it. Yeah. Now, is that cum or pee coming out of the uh, top of the head there? Uh, it's the first time I've asked anybody that today. Here. <laughs> what did we arrive at on that? It was... Uh, cum or pee. By the way, I would watch six <laughs> seasons of Mario Lopez host a show only that played in hotels called cum or pee. <laughs> you know how Mario Lopez is always in your hotel? God, he's good. He's good. Every time I walk in, he's like, a mysterious bank robber shows up at a Panera. I mean, how many? And you're like, I don't want to watch his shit, but he, <laughs> you take your shirt off and maybe we'll talk. Yeah. yeah, I mean, dude, him with his shirt off, fantastic. Yeah, he's I mean, like 59, I think. No. <laughs> 53? Okay. Isaac, Google it. Let's play a little game 53. called 53. Come or Pete. What's that? 53. 53. Uh, I'm going to say 51. Okay. I'm going to $1 you and go 52. Oh, same age. Look that. at that, same huh? Same age as me. You guys should have a 50 off or something. I don't know. That sounded better in my head. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm having a good time. And uh, I think it's important to have a good time, especially at 50. You made yeah. it this far. How do you feel? I, you know what? I just decided to get healthy, man. Yeah. I lost a bunch of weight, exercise, and yep. cold plunge, all this, this crazy raving Technology. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of ways to do it now. The cold plunge is exciting because I think most people are like, I don't have access to the Arctic. Yeah. I'm far from Alaska. I've seen the Coca-Cola bear on TV. You know, that's as close as I've been to the wilderness. So when you jump in, how cold is it? I keep it right at 50 degrees. There you go. 50 yeah. for 50. But uh, what, what, I, what I really want to talk about is. Please, I'm an open uh, book. And you can read about me being an open book in my book, We've Got Issues. Yeah, I love it. Um, the, the, the blood transfusion thing where you just replace all of the blood in your body with like a real stud of a like 18-year-old kid. Oh, yeah. I've got full tanner from top to bottom right now. I don't have my own blood right now. It's yeah. tanner from Temecula. Nice. Yep. And he's still alive. I didn't take It's not like a donor thing where he, you know, some kid... Some fucked up kid in, you know, Rancho Cucamonga fell off a skateboard and I took all his, you know, brain juice. No, no, no. It's, there's a real living kid named Tanner who was born with too much blood. Some of us are born with too much blood. There's a website called too muchblood.com. You go on it, you put in your birthday, 
shows you other people with your birthday, you're a match, you drive down to their house, Craigslist style, you knock on the door, hopefully their mom's there, because this kid's 12, that's the best blood you can get. You don't want 50 year old fucking Mario Lopez blood, you know? And that's no, you know, hey, I bet your, I bet your cum is pee and your pee is cum, but I don't want your blood player. So I go to Tanner's house in Temecula, stop by, one of my favorite wineries is up there, have a couple glasses of Pinot, lay down on a bed, hooked up to an IV like you get at like a Next Health, boom, next, next thing you know, I feel like I can fucking tap dance and, you know, do calligraphy and whatever else 12 year olds are doing, saying racist shit over Xbox Live. Yeah. What are the benefits of that? <laughs> What's the benefits of getting somebody else's blood? Just to feel better? I don't want to talk about it. But I think that there is something about, uh, no, I feel great. I feel great. I feel energized. It's like a cold plunge, but times five. Or like, you know how um, they got those hyperbolic chambers you can sit down in, sleep, you know, you take a 20 minute nap, you feel like you've slept for five years. Hyperbolic or hyperbaric? We'll be right back. <laughs> Can I talk to you for a second? I thought I was not going to be embarrassed <laughs> on this podcast Sorry. today. Oh, how are you? Sorry. Oh, it's okay. Good to see you. That's what I love about the comedy story. That was Jim Carrey who just came in. <laughs> Jim Carrey just popped in to take a shit. You never know who's coming through. Who's the most famous person you met? And what did you feel when you met him? Another get to know you question. I ask kids that all the time. They go, well, I haven't met anyone famous. Is the mailman famous? I go, no, you fucking idiot. But... <laughs> I'm talking like Cher or, or uh, you know Ryan Seacrest. So who's the famous person that got you all fired up for life, Steve-O? Ah, man. The, when I was a little kid, I met Motley Crue. That's, that's a good one. Yeah. How old were you? 13. <sighs> did it feel great? It did, man. Did, what'd you say to him? <laughs> I, or the group, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I... I uh, I didn't really say a whole lot. I stumbled over my words. You were nervous. I, I was. Did they recognize that and calm you down? Uh, well, I don't know that they could really tell what was going on because they had some some issues. Well, they were riding that uh, <laughs> that uh, Cantaloupe Highway. That's yeah, I not think. a good one. We'll edit this out, Isaac. But uh, <laughs> So they probably looked at you at 13 being like, hey, kid, you probably got sweet blood. In 37 years, you're going to have a penis on the yeah. top of your eyeball if you keep things crunk. Right. Seeing a band that you're a fan of as a kid is wild. Uh, you know, I saw Bare Naked Ladies about a month ago. They were okay. But when I was a kid, I saw Death Leopard. Oh, boy. They were, and I saw the Beatles, too. The Beatles might be the first band where I go, I th I'd fuck a guy. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. All right. Nobody else? Am I alone on this one? <laughs> Thanks for leaving me out to dry, Isaac. I see you back there nodding. Maybe just <laughs> vocalize it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's something else, man. It's something else, yeah. What is what is something else is that, you know, it, it's been now, been in Los Angeles. You know, I have a place in Texas, too. I like to travel a lot. I like to be in one spot. And I do talk about this in my book, We've Got Issues, that you got to mix it up. And you're doing that. You guys are all doing that. You got the podcast in the van. You drive around. Sometimes you go on location. You come indoors. People uh, love to hear you talk. They love to hear you ask real shit. Also be silly and goofy. I've been watching the pod from afar for quite some time. Uh, and it's uh, interesting to me to see people go step out of their comfort zone. You know, and you make people comfy. And that's a tough thing to do in 2024 because everyone, you know, oh, you know, you can't say this. You can't. You know, you can't, you know, chat roulette. You got to, you know, can't take your dick out anymore. You know, everyone's just trying to clamp down, you know. You ever played chat roulette? No, but you know what I did do? Uh, I've been training my, my butthole. For the Olympics? <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. Um, I, I jammed a completely full bottle of Diet Coke. No, you didn't. Right in my butt. No, you didn't. Squeezed it. No, you didn't. Squeezed it. Why'd you do that? Filling, my, filling myself up. No, you didn't. Yep. And then I yanked out the bottle. I tossed it. And then I started plugging in Mentos. We have the footage. I need to see this. <laughs> I need to see it live. <laughs> you aren't, you're not doing that tonight on the show, are you? Is that, is that a one-time deal? That, uh, I, I did think that if I was to use a two-liter bottle, 
That feels I, ambitious. I, I, I might be able to 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 shoot it. Cure cancer. To shoot more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to shoot it higher. Yep. Yeah. And well, so, I love that you're dreaming big. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you now gotta, what? Now why diet coke? Why not regular? I well because I cut sugar out of my diet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the trick works with that with regular Coke though. Okay. Well, it was just a just a simple fucking question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on your shit list. Sorry, down. doctor. Uh no, I, I hear you. Well, that's exciting. The butthole is a muscle. Yeah. You know? So why can't it be trained to do fun tricks? Right. It's a one stop shop for just, you know, exit only or enter uh at your own risk. And uh I feel like there's we're not uh we're not letting the butthole do its thing. Right. You are. Yeah. Now, on tonight's show, uh, I've been told that you're uh, going to do some some fun stuff. With my butthole. With your butthole. I cannot wait. Yeah. This, uh, ca- the comedy store has, you know, there's been a lot of butts on stage, but nothing, you know, <laughs> nobody's doing any sort of fun tricks with it. Right. Is, is, is it what you're doing tonight, has it been practiced and rehearsed, or is it just kind of a off the cuff? Uh, it's a new trick. I love that. I've established that I can do it. Okay. And um, the difference is that when I learned it, my butthole was very warmed up. Right. I had been warming it up with uh, various various objects, okay. various exercises. Okay. Coming in cold. Yep. It might be a little more challenging. Okay. Well, we've got time. Yeah. Yeah. We're willing to, to see it play out. From beginning uh, to end, I mean, it's just a big deal, man. It's it's exciting what what can happen with buttholes. Well, you know what? You're proving too that you. Yeah, that was my high school yearbook quote. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Indeed, we will be right back. We just got to pay some bills first. Do you got to pay bills? Well. It's time to become a business person. And what's the best way to do that? It's to build an audience online and monetize that audience. You sell them stuff. So what do you need to do that? A website? Whether or not you have a website, the best way to build it, the gold standard of e-commerce websites is Shopify. That is how to make the most professional and easy website. Plus, Every single component of e-commerce that can possibly be built into a website is also available to you with Shopify. This is the way to take your business, no matter how big or small your business is, and grow it massively. Whether you don't even have a website, then this is it. And if you've got a website and a big business, then you're going to do better with Shopify. If you don't believe me, then how about a $1 per month trial period? Yeah, dude. That's about as risk-free as you could possibly get. You can find out how Shopify can help you by going to shopify.com slash stevo. That's all in lowercase letters. Shopify.com slash stevo to get yourself started with a $1 per month trial period. Again, it's as risk-free as you can get, and it's time to grow that business and pay those bills. One more time, shopify.com slash Devo, all in lowercase, $1 per month. You can't go wrong. Now, let's ride this baby home. I mean, in case everybody, if people really want to know, yeah, we just took a quick break. We had to take a break. I had to uh, make a call. My Postmates guy well, I couldn't find it. I don't like to order food every uh, night, but I also, my wife's cooking. She's not going to see this, but it's, She's a, uh, it's prison food. Yeah. You know, she makes, she tries her best, which I'm all for. America's all about trying. You got to try, but you know, if you don't succeed, try, try again, or, you know, <laughs> Uber eats. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to fucking lie. Here's my, fa- ask me say, Hey, how'd you like my cooking? I can't lie. Yeah. Okay. What do you think of my cooking? No. So you're my wife, Robin. Oh, yeah. Okay, yours, yeah, yeah. I haven't tasted your cooking. You haven't invited <laughs> me over to a barbecue, but yeah, well, you but, just wait until you see when I walk out on that stage tonight, you're going to get a little <laughs> taste of what I'm cooking. Oh, <laughs> no. It feels like it's coming out of your body, I feel like. That's right. Well, uh, Okay, so I'm Robin. You're robbing my wife, All and right. you asked me, uh, you just made me, let's say, some uh, strawberry. Hey, well, honey, how did you like that? I can't believe you even fucking asked me that, sweetheart. 
Do you smell the bullshit that's coming out of the microwave right now? You did that. You did that. <clears throat> you see, I just turned into a fucking menace, you know? Nobody wants to hear that sort of feedback. You just gaslight her. You gaslight her. But it's important to know that you fucked up. <laughs> We've all made mistakes. Sometimes you put your pants on backwards, and that's on you. But then on the flip side, maybe that's God's way of telling you it's time to start peeing out of your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Man, man, you're you're just good at what you do. I appreciate it. I try. Yeah, I fuck up too. We all fuck up. It's part of being a human being, you know. It's part of being Joe Rogan, you know, and his alien homies. They they know a little bit about <clears throat> fucking up because you know it's it's part of being a creature is being imperfect, right? Yeah. But then you just try to learn, watch the game tape. You know, sometimes if I go to a strip club for a buddy's bachelor party, I'll throw a five. You know, and I'll go, I should, probably should have just thrown three singles, you know, because she's not really trying that hard. Yeah. She's dan- she's trying to try hard, but her body won't ke- keep up. Does that make sense? Right. I know how that works, man, because I, I've been taking pole dancing classes myself. Oh, she's going to ask you. You look limber, more limber and, and agile than normal. What's your regimen on the pole? How many, uh, I don't know what to fucking ask you. What do you, what, do you spin around? What do you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do it on a spinning pole. It's, it's for cardio, yeah? Yeah. And ah, it's a little strength training. Strength training. Cool. You get it all. You get it all. It's also got to be one of those things that guys are doing now because it's 2024, right? Women can vote. Guys can strip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Do you uh, do you find that it makes your, your relationship stronger because your girl's like, all right, well. My girl actually takes classes with me. So, you know, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'll take a cooking class with Robin. You know, my idea, obviously, but... Uh, <laughs> but it's you know you got to be coy with that stuff. But that's fun. That's a good one where you can actually enjoy each other while you're watching them enjoy something different. Right. Right. And then you can just like <clears throat> he- head on over to the other pole. The other pole. Okay. Because yeah, I got a- my pole. My lady's got her pole. But then sometimes I'll go on over to her pole. Not quite sure what you mean, but okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, here we go. You'll go to her pole. Yeah. So she's got a strap. Well, I'm not picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> Should we say it again? It's 2024. 2024. Isn't that, that's like the new, uh, um, you know, Carpe Diem. Yeah. Remember your friend in college would be like, hey, I, you know, I you know, I went over to the frat. I stayed a little late. I had too many uh, Coors Light and Zimas. You know how I get when I drink Zimas, Cody? You know, and then next thing you know, you wake up and you're playing a game called Whose Finger Is That? And then you go Carpe Diem. And so I think that 2024 is the new, you know, excuse button. That's all you need to know. What's the last excuse you guys made? Ooh. That was a fucking big ass sigh if I've ever heard one. You all right? Yeah. When he like, farted, I, he said, excuse me. I don't. Okay, we'll keep it in. That was funny. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Like excuse? I mean, what did you get out of like? Like an excuse? Like what'd you do? Did you did you fib? Did you tell a, a tale to somebody? Nah. Did you get asked to do something and like you could? You... I guess that's the main adult way to go about it, right? Yeah. Or maybe you were at Starbucks and somebody behind you was like, "Hey, you mind paying for my cookie?" And you go, "I'm all out of cash." And they go, "I just saw you use Apple Pay." And you go, "It didn't it doesn't allow me to buy more than one cookie." Yeah, I mean, we were. I got a cookie limit. Before I did that uh, Diet Coke and Butt men- stuff, Mentos yeah. yep. thing with my butthole. You did a. Well, you put a cookie up there? No, I didn't put any cookies in there, but I. Well, not with that attitude. <laughs> you gotta believe in yourself. Right. I had to clear, I had to clear it out. You know, I, I had to really. Oh, so you took like a, a, an enema? Yeah, I had a big syringe thing and I was just pumping stuff in. Good God. And just, you know. Where's the excuse come into this? Well, that was my excuse. Oh, for not, for, gotcha, for not uh, doing the Diet Coke thing. Well, no, I did do the Diet Coke thing. So what's the... It's just the it's <laughs> just a just tough the, time following Scott, the story. Scott walked in <clears throat> my, my hotel room. Oh, and you had a Diet Coke in your butt. No, 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 I, I walked in there and I was like, dude, it smells like shit everywhere. Right. And I was like, I just cleaned myself out. Oh, for okay. But, you, but what really happened was... You had a cookie up there. What? I'm, yeah, what are you, what are you talking about? Excuse. <laughs> Would you fucking figure out how this story goes and send me a link to it later? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. I feel like I'm watching Avatar backwards right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me, man. No, I, well, who knows what's wrong with any of us? Everything that's wrong with you is right with you. And that's why yeah. you're here. That's why we're here. <laughs> yeah. That's why to you're learn. here. That's why I'm here. Right? You know, I feel like you can put out as much as you want, but you just make sure you're taking some in too. Yeah. What'd you think of the Hawk Tua girl? I. Uh, she's on the show tonight. Yeah. I'm, Big I, deal. I, I, th- I think she's an attractive young lady. Gorgeous. Uh, definitely got some eyes on her by. You know, I didn't even know she had a name, to be honest with you. Right. I don't think the world did. Imagine just being uh, having a name your whole life, and then all of a sudden everyone's like, no, no, that's not you. Right. Here's who you are because of what you did. Like, I went to uh, middle school with a girl named uh, Stacy. She crap, sorry to go back to poop uh, again, but she, uh, she shit herself first day of middle school, first day of eighth grade. So, of course, everyone called her shit pants Stacy. Yeah. She transferred middle schools. People only transfer colleges. You got to be pretty fucking down in the dumps to go. I can't finish eighth grade here. <laughs> Middle school is even more young. harsh. Yeah. Kids are kids are uh, oh, I guess ruthless. Seventh and eighth grade. That's when kids are really starting to feel themselves, act all tough. You know, that's when fucking guys get muscles and mustaches and girls get periods and tits. Right? <laughs> Not in that order either. Right. <laughs> but but I. I don't know. I don't know what I was talking about, but oh, the Hawk to a girl. The Hawk to a girl. What do you think about her? I think uh, she's got a bright future. You really think that? Anything's possible, right? Kevin Garnett said that after he won the NBA Finals. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? What do you think really is gonna? What, what's her trajectory? Game shows or? I haven't seen any of the stuff that she's been doing in the wake of of the viral moment. Well, doesn't she have a reality show coming out? Oh, dear God. For real? Seriously. Enough reality shows. We've got too many. You know? Although I do love the dating shows. Love is Blind. Love is Deaf. Love Connection. Love Connection. Down Syndrome. Book Naked. Deaf Blind Love. Uh, Too Hot to Handle, Surviving Paradise, Bachelor, Golden Bachelor. Naked, uh, naked and Afraid. Naked and Afraid, Just a Tip, Don't Tell My Parents. <laughs> Is that your foot or your fist? Two Bears, One Cave, Three Girls, One uh, one Dad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and then Love is Blind, you know? But uh, I don't know. I think she might go on one of those. I think you're right. Reality show. People want to follow her life now. <clears throat> Post hoc to it. Is she single? Great question. I'll probably ask her on stage. Yeah. I don't like to prepare too much for the show. Everything's a winging it and dinging it, you know? Smelt it, who dealt it, you know? Do we know how old she is? Do we know anything about her besides Huck Tua? Not really. That's why I think the world is curious. To a point. You know, you don't want to pry or investigate too much. You feel like a fucking pervert, you know? Because she is a young girl. It's like, you know, she's... Look, is she destined for OnlyFans? For sure. But, you know, but I, I I don't judge. I'm, I, if anything, I'm deflecting that I don't have a body that's uh, conducive for making cash. You know, I wish I could just draw a fucking clit on my big toe and some guy in Des Moines, Iowa pays 90 bucks just to smell it. <laughs> yeah. She says she's not going to end up on OnlyFans. I believe it. They all say that, though. Okay. Interesting point. Kind of like everybody who starts snorting heroin says, I'm never going to inject Okay, so that's a gateway. Snorting is a gateway to injecting. It becomes economically <clears throat> unfeasible. Now, do you think if we snorted the vaccine, we might all we might have been cured COVID quicker? It hits, it hits you quicker when you snort. Yeah, I snorted a Tylenol PM once, just for fun. You know, my anything? edibles had kicked in, and I was like, "What if I just fucking snorted this shit?" You know, did it take right, your right to the dome. Did it, take, did it take your headache away quicker? Well, I didn't have a headache. I just was, it was a fucking Sunday afternoon. I was bored, you know, <laughs> <laughs> watching the prices right, doing some, some, some uh, bumps of Tylenol PM. <laughs> yeah, but that's what happens when you get older. You try to find your new vice, you know. Is it true that you still play tennis 300 days out of the year? It is, it is. I got to keep my body in, in check. It's my instrument. I don't play the bass clarinet anymore, so I have to make sure that I'm, uh, I'm locked and loaded, not just for my marriage, but for my life, my, my day-to-day. Tennis is fun, too. Go ahead, Steve. How do you play tennis when you can barely walk? Great question, Steve. Well, if you're a paraplegic, listen up. I've got a DVD tutorial of how to play sports if you're stuck in a chair. Now, if you've got, uh, coincidentally, also uh, Jurassic Park arms, uh, my t-ball coach, Mr. Drew, shout out, had tiny little T-Rex arms, and he couldn't play tennis or wheel himself uh, in a wheelchair, but he drove a car 
which scared all the parents. I digress. My point is, if you want to play tennis, all you got to do is pick up a racket and have a little bit of faith. Anything's possible. But uh, I play <laughs> I play just uh, – it's a camaraderie thing. You know, I go down to the local YMCA. Um, shirt's optional. Now, when you're in the locker room, yeah. changing into your uh, tennis gear. Mesh shorts. I wear a Hakeem Olajuwon jersey that's signed. I met Hakeem Olajuwon once at a Subway, the the fast food restaurant. This is pre-Jared. And uh, Hakeem Olajuwon walked in, and he was like, "Can I get it?" I don't do accents, but he was doing a he was getting a a, a tuna a tuna a six inch tuna on honey oat, and I said, "That's fucking Hakeem Olajuwon." You know, unbeknownst to him, I'm wearing a Hakeem Olajuwon jersey that I stole from my uh, my friend's son, and. Uh, <laughs> He wasn't gonna wear it. He's too big for it. You know, it was a medium. This kid, you know, this kid has a uh, this kid has all of it. You know, yeah, boobs and a wiener. So he uh, he'll grow out of it. You know, that's just childhood obesity. Put down the snacks and pick up the uh, accountability. But um, but Hakeem Hakeem was at that subway. I forget where their story was going. But I met Hakeem Olajuwon, and and so uh, I took the I wear it now as a good luck charm when I play tennis. Now, when you're changing the locker room, do you just let your dong just swing all over the place? Can I be honest? I don't like to look at other people's unless they're black, but I do. I do let mine fly. Yeah, I've, I've seen too many white penises. You know, my own, my my, my kids growing up. Um, you know, online there's chat roulette, like I said earlier. You know, that's it became a lot of that, so I, I shut that down real quick. But uh, every now and then you take a peek. It's tough not to. It's in a great spot. We're always looking down. You know, guys are always, you know, women look up when they space out. You know, oh, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if, I, I, wonder, I wonder if Mike's <laughs> going to take me to Paris to see Coldplay. <laughs> and then guys are always looking down like, oh, fuck, those Coldplay tickets are expensive. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So it's, a, it's that in between where you really get stuff done. You're not looking too high. You're not looking too low. You know who said that? Hakeem Olajuwon. <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll keep her out of here. <laughs> yeah, it's always weird when guys walk around naked. We, when we I, were at I the, don't like it, man. We were at the uh, sauna someplace before a show, and like okay. I, went, I went down to the spa with Paul, our, our buddy Paul, and he just dropped naked and was just like, hey, so what's up? And I'm like... Paul did? Yeah. You know, like, You're going to talk to me I don't like... I want to talk to you naked. But Paul did? Yeah. Wow. He's like, oh, what's up, dude? I'll, you know, I'll be a half hour. Take your time. Does he have a but, pretty big dog? Yeah. Yeah, well, there you have it. I mean, I guess if you have a big dong, you walk around naked. If you I think a- there's there's a confidence to it. Yeah. I was once in a steam room once, uh, not to brag, but I'm in the steam room, and, and everyone's supposed to wear a towel or, uh, or you know, bare men. And uh, big dude in there, Samoan dude, and it was real steamy, and uh, all the steam clears, and he was whacking off in the steam room. Did he have a big dong? <laughs> You think I stuck around to assess the situation? <laughs> Once I saw that he was beating it, I fucking took that as a cue to get up and go to the sauna, you know. But uh, I'm assuming he did, you know. I think if you're there, you know, people that live uh, near water, I feel like are are the most conducive to having uh, been blessed. Yeah, south of the equator. The yep. You guys are afraid of the water? So many shark attacks going on. That's there we're doing are. a doing a whole show next week. About how the water, unless it's, unless you, we don't have gills, so why are you going in? That's my whole thing. You know, I was attacked by a shark once in my dreams and uh, it terrified me. It was me, Katy Perry, Pat Sajak, and Alex Trebek. And Katy was with Pat and I was with Alex. And we were, you know, Alex and I was platonic, but we had gone on this shark cruise. It was Shark Week. You know, they take celebrities. Have you done Shark Week? Yeah. You have. Yeah. Tell me about it. My story sucks. They had Shark Week for 30 years with no attacks. And then we did Jackass Shark Week. And we didn't make it 30 minutes. Until somebody was attacked? Somebody was attacked. Because you crazy fucks probably threw meat and you jumped in attached to meat and stuff, huh? Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> you crazy son of a bitch. I love you. <laughs> Thanks, that's fun. That's crazy. That's And that's good TV. Because guess what? You get people like Adam Devine and Anders Holm, and they go on there, and they're like, you know, you know, you know, you know, whatever. They do some dumb shit. And then you go on there, and you got fucking Kobe beef sliders attached to your cock. And you're like, hey, fucking flipper, take a yeah. bite out of the crime. 
I, I, yeah, our, our buddy Poop is he uh, severed his arteries. No, he didn't. He got snap, crackle, S- chomped on. They, they, he had multiple surgeries to reattach severed arteries God and damn. tendons. Good TV. It's great TV. <laughs> it's, it's, Live, they, they captured it all. They didn't blur it. They, 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 they let it ride. Discovery Channel is gangster like that. You know, <laughs> CBS, they blur the veins. Yeah. Uh uh-uh. uh. Discovery's like, let it ride, baby. Let's Just, see the. Yeah. They let you discover what happened. Be right back. I think uh, I thought you were going to take that, but it's okay. Now, sharks might be the most dangerous creature out there in the Uh, water. What about on land? Rhino. Yep. I'd rather be attacked by a bear than a rhino. Hippopotamus. All right, hippopotamus. Hippos kill the most people. It it has or it will? It it, it has. A hippo has killed. Yeah. Yeah, no, they, they routinely, they kill more humans than any other animal oh my god and they're vegetarian <clears throat> they're just doing it just oh. to be dicks oh. they're not even eating you can you eat rhino is it like chicken i'm sure they do i've been to a restaurant it, where was this jamaica they had every animal you could ask for what'd you get really <laughs> don't fucking Pull it together. Grow up. Was that the craziest thing you've ever eaten? <laughs> it was an actual wise? beaver. I, swear. I know you're like, oh, hell, what was your name? No, it was a real beaver. It was a real beaver. It didn't taste good. You know, sometimes people eat like a moose and they go, it tasted like chicken. And they go, how come it didn't taste like moose, you fucking moron? I hate those people. <laughs> so beaver, t- <laughs> beaver tastes like, I don't even know, like zebra, you know, because I've never felt it before in my mouth. <clears throat> but, um, I had a zebra. I ate a zebra once in Madagascar. You went to Madagascar? I went to Madagascar. Did you meet Ben Stiller? Yeah. I did. The star of Madagascar. That's why yeah, I was kidding. Yeah. No, I had, I had uh, terrible dreams full- afterwards. Yeah. You know. Well, zebras will come after you. Because they're, they're like, they're part lion, part uh, horse, right? Yeah. Like Is a that cap- true? Like a capybara. Capybara. No, 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 no. You didn't answer your, uh, the favorite animal question. Right. What? Favorite animal? Uh, seagull. seagull. That's right. Are we going to go around the room? Isaac? Sloth. That's right. Anteater. Does that mean you're uncircumcised? I think so. <laughs> it does mean, though, that you're curious. Because an anteater's always got its head in the ground, right? That's right. Looking for secrets. Yeah. Tell us a secret. Okay, we'll fucking pick one. We got only a few minutes left. You have any advice for uh, How about questions a, for Dr. Phil? Questions. There we go. <clears throat> Maybe I can help uh, figure out one of these secrets and bring it to the surface. I'm curious on how much... Take your time. Sound it out. <laughs> what is too much masturbation? What is too much <laughs> masturbation? It's not a bad question. I think... Um, how many times are you doing it? Twice a day? Well, yeah, that's fine. I thought you were going to say like 15 times an hour. You know, I've done that. It was a dare. My wife <laughs> dared me. I can't refuse a dare. And then she double dog dared me. You ever get... She, there was a time where it was like... I'm not fucking finished with my story. Yeah. So she double dog dared me. And then she triple dog dared me. And then she double dared me. And then she double dare shared me. Which is... She puts on share during her double dare. And then you got to jerk off. To, uh, well, okay. So three times, a, three times a week feels plenty. But two times a day feels like there's something else going on. What's the porn you're watching? Homemade. Homemade? What does that mean? Oh, homemade. Like your your own? Cell phone footage. Your own cell phone footage? Not my own cell phone footage. I thought I had. So you're putting it into the search engine. You're searching for homemade. Do you like baked goods come up? No. When you put in homemade? No. Oh, look who it is. Hi, Nicholas. Well, well, well. If it isn't. My grandpa's best friend from Bingo Night. <laughs> Don't even start with me. <laughs> Say hi, Nick. Hey, what's up, man? It's Nick Nolte. <laughs> you look good. <laughs> save it. Wait, save it for the stage. I mean, save it. Private Ryan. Okay. Well, well, two minutes, we'll be out of here. Yeah. I love you. Hey, we praise him. We praise him? Pray love. Eat, pray, love. That's a Nick yeah. Nolte quote if I've ever heard it. Ever I fucking love you, Nick. We'll be right out. We'll be right back. Yeah. Uh, how we doing? I think we're in good shape. I think man. we're in let's, great shape. Let, let's call it a day. I love you. Yeah, I, I love you guys. You. Love you. Appreciate yeah. the hospitality. Dude, congrats on everything, man. I appreciate it. It's been a fun uh, ride. We had, dude, we had the actual Dr. Phil, and you smoked him. 
I appreciate you. And now like, you ask him, I mean. <laughs> Pretty wild, yeah. And one day we'll, we'll both uh, come on together. How about that? Yeah. I think uh, life is a ride. Some would say it's uh, up and down. Some would say you uh, put your head in the ground to, to ask yourself the big question, am I jerking off too much? I don't think so. I think some would say you're not jerking off enough. <laughs> Nobody. The answer I was for. <laughs> well, there it is. I think challenge yourself. Look in the mirror and go, am I doing? There's a girl named Stephanie Maddow from 90 Day Fiance. She started farting into cups and selling them online to strangers with families and teeth. Yeah. And uh, she made upwards of 50 grand in two months. Mm. There's no joke here. I just think the point is, ask yourself, am I doing enough for my family? In the mirror, in the mirror yeah. <laughs> I'll take it from here. But I think that there's something about <laughs> life being a crazy ride, but it's the best when it's a wild ride with yeah. Steve-O and the gang. Dude, I love it, man. You keep it right here. I love you guys. <laughs> and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I believe that I can tell you confidently next week's episode will be a wildly different Steve-O. A more on point, more, uh, you know... <laughs> And uh, man, I'm telling you one more time that this Super Dummy Tour has shaped up to be fucking awesome. Like, I'm really, really hyped about it. And I hope that you come out and see me on tour. Um, also hope you're having a wonderful day. I also hope how much you know how much I appreciate you sticking around to the end of the podcast. As always, thank you, my beautiful street team. And... Uh, Let's go get ready for this fucking show tonight. Yeah, dude.